The intent of this part one video is to provide an introduction to the concepts involved in strategic bombing and review the destruction inflicted by the most common World War II aerial bomb. The aim of any bomber is to destroy the enemy's ability to make war. This is accomplished by attacking ground installations, naval assets, supply lines, factories, and even personnel by aerial bombing. The B-17s dropped more bombs than any other American bomber in World War II. The British Lancaster actually dropped more tonnage of bombs than the B-17s. Explosive fill in aerial bombs well exceeds the explosive fill of artillery projectiles of similar weight and can be sent orders of magnitude beyond the range of any ground or naval artillery battery. Factoids of the B-17 bomb system include, there are 42 internal bomb stations spanning four bomb racks. B-17s can carry wing-mounted bombs on removable external pylons. Each of the wing stations can support a 4,000-pound bomb. External bomb carry was rarely adopted due to aircraft performance reduction considerations. B-17 internal bomb weight can range from 100 pounds to 2,000 pounds. There are various inconsistent documents outlining the maximum bomb loadout of the B-17. This 1949 Boeing document lists the B-17's maximum bomb load of 12,800 pounds. In an overloaded configuration, a B-17 could carry 17,600 pounds worth of bombs. This would consist of six 1,600-pound internal bombs plus two 4,000-pound wing-mounted bombs. Bombs are accessible during flight by crew members traversing a narrow bomb bay beam catwalk. The bomb bay is located at the intersection of the wing spars, fuselage bulkhead frames, and catwalk. The catwalk is a load-bearing keel beam. The bomb bay is located in the most structurally sound compartment of the B-17. By the time the war ended, about 40% of Germany's urban core had been destroyed. This 1947 German chart illustrates the portion of the city destroyed. The shaded areas of the circle represent the percent of the city destroyed. Virtually all the destruction was due to strategic bombing. For example, 70% of the city of Frankfurt was destroyed. Over 29,000 tons of bombs fell on Frankfurt. 59% were dropped by the British and 41% were dropped by the Americans. The Americans sent bombers to Frankfurt on 28 different occasions. For reference, this image represents the damage from 76 bombers releasing 269 tons of bombs over a marshalling yard. The tonnage dropped over Frankfurt was about 108 times this raid. Over the course of World War II, the 8th Army Air Force is operating out of England and the 15th Army Air Force is operating out of Italy dropped over 1.5 million tons of bombs over Nazi-occupied Europe. The x-axis of this chart is a month and year. The y-axis is the running total tonnage of bombs dropped by either the 15th or 8th Army Air Forces. The tabular data and source references shown. The totals include bombs dropped by medium bombers and fighters. The 8th Army Air Forces dropped 63% of all U.S. bombs dropped over Nazi-occupied Europe. The x-axis of the chart is a month and year. The y-axis is the tons of bombs dropped over Nazi-occupied Europe per month. Both the 8th and 15th Army Air Forces are represented. This chart provides a clearer picture that bombing really ramped up at the start of 1944 when long-range fighter escorts became available. The totals include bombs dropped by both medium bombers and fighters also. This chart indicates the distribution of ordnance released by the 8th Army Air Forces over Nazi-occupied Europe by type of ordnance and country. The column HE is High Explosive Demolition Bomb or General Purpose Bomb. Column IE is Incendiary Bomb like Magnesium, Thermite, or Napalm. Column FRAG is a Fragmentation Bomb. Takeaways from this data include 75% of all bombs dropped by the 8th Army Air Forces fell in Germany. 21% of all bombs dropped by the 8th Army Air Forces fell in France. 0.02% of all bombs dropped by the 8th Army Air Forces fell in Switzerland by Bombardier Navigator Error. General purpose bombs accounted for 83% of all bombs dropped by the 8th Army Air Forces. Incendiary bombs accounted for 14% and fragmentation bombs accounted for only 3%. This chart outlines the distribution of high explosive bombs dropped over Germany during 1943 through 1945. 
49% of all high-explosive general-purpose bombs were of the 500-pound size. In summary, the most common type of bomb dropped by B-17s over Nazi-occupied Europe was a general-purpose or demolition bomb. Of this type, the 500-pound general-purpose bomb was the most common-sized bomb. The general-purpose bomb is considered the most all-around effective bomb against industrial targets. General-purpose bombs induce damage by air blast, fragmentations, and or earth shock. Key points of the 500-pound general-purpose bomb include the weight of the bomb is 512 pounds. The overall bomb size with fuses and tail fin is 59 inches in length and 14 inches in diameter. Approximately one half of the bomb weight is an explosive fill, either TNT or Comp B. The other half of the bomb weight includes the steel casing, fuses, and tail fin. The bomb's casing sidewall thickness is 0.3 inch gauge steel. The color of the casing bomb stripe indicates the bomb fill material. Yellow signifies high explosive fill. One nose and tail stripe indicates TNT as the explosive fill. Two nose and tail stripes indicate Comp B as the explosive fill. Comp B releases about 16% more energy than TNT. The bomb's detonation chain is initiated by the nose and or tail fuse. We will discuss the detonation train sequence, fuses, bomb rack, attach shackles, and arming in a future video. The bomb's terminal velocity on impact is about 715 miles per hour, or Mach 0.94. The minimum safe splinter distance is about 360 feet. The destructive power of various sized general purpose bombs dropped on a row of brick buildings is shown in this graphic. This chart represents the penetration distance of unexploded bombs of various sizes in sandy clay soil. The x-axis is the altitude of bomb release, the y-axis is the distance the bomb travels in the soil along a J-shape. The family of curves in the center of the chart represent various bomb types and sizes. The 500-pound general purpose bomb is designated as the AN-M64. To use this chart, assume the AN-M64 bomb is dropped from 25,000 feet. The bomb will travel in the soil along a J-shaped path for 21 feet. Correcting for the vertical distance, the bomb will be 13 feet below the surface. Since the bomb is 6 foot length total, none of the bomb will be exposed. This is why unexploded bombs are continually being discovered while digging all over Europe post-World War II. This chart shows the penetration thickness of reinforced concrete by various unexploded bombs. The chart data indicates that the general purpose bombs are not effective in penetrating thick reinforced concrete. Bomb case rupture may occur. The 500 pound general purpose bombs can penetrate reinforced concrete slabs up to 21 inches though. This chart shows the penetration thickness of steel armor by various unexploded bombs. The data indicates that general purpose bombs are not effective in attacking steel armor. The 500 pound general purpose bombs can be adopted in penetrating steel armor only up to about 1.2 inches thick. As a rule of thumb, penetration in earth will be 15 to 10 times the penetration in concrete, which in turn will be 10 to 20 times the penetration in steel. This chart outlines the crater width and depth for detonated bombs. Interpolating the chart's data, a standard AN-M64 500 pound general purpose bomb will displace enough soil to create an earthen crater 33 feet wide and 15 feet deep. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.